On this episode, I'm backpacking into a remote canyon complex in the American Southwest, where I'll be camping, hiking, and exploring for the next three days. Along the way, I face adverse weather conditions, battle through tangled brush, and I'm reminded I may not be the only one in this canyon. But I'm rewarded with seeing many evidences of the ancient ones that used to call these places home. This is one trip I'll remember for a very long time. Oh man, it's just just one of those days I am grateful to be out here. Full on spring hasn't hit, things aren't greened up yet, but the weather's really starting to feel nice. It's the time of year when water really shouldn't be an issue and we just had a storm come through about five days ago. So it's good sign seeing all these potholes already full of water. If you're not familiar with desert hiking, drinking out of potholes is very common. Of course you want to filter it like you always do. But a pothole is basically just an eroded kind of shallow impression. Sometimes they're deep, um, but just an impression in the sandstone that collects water. Ah, feels good to be in the canyon. Wow, that was fast. I literally just dropped in sort of around this bend about 200 yards back. And clearly that is an ancient route to get into this canyon because we've got a little granary there. And I just noticed a bigger structure right there. I'm realizing there's a lot on this overhang, but let's check this one out first. Looks just like a standard granary in here. Okay, so about 25 feet to the right is this much bigger structure, or what remains of it. This was clearly a habitation because you've got all the blackening up there on the ceiling. Wow, yeah, this whole interior wall is just covered in soot. Here's some more down here. Not really sure if that's original or somebody more recent time stacked all that juniper wood like that. Look at this, there's still a little bit of the original fibers that they used to tie those sticks together. Probably eight, nine hundred plus years old. Here's the inside construction. These things are pretty much always empty these days, so and imagine what was in here at one point in time. So the second one has a great example of you know, how these things would have originally been sealed up. This is not sealed, this is just sort of propped, propped up against that. But it's a good example of how when these things were actually in use, they would have sealed this front little doorway with like a sandstone slab like that. So many fingerprints up here in this mortar. So you can just see how like perfectly three fingers just sort of fit right up in there and push that in there. And it's always fascinating to think, you know, how old was that person? What was their life like? You know, how long did they live for? So if you're wondering, you know, how can these ancient structures that are 800, 1,000 plus years old uh, be in such good shape out here? Well, you're really looking at it right here. This big overhang protects them from pretty much all sun and definitely all rain and snow. And so already it's a dry climate out here, but then you throw in something like this and yeah, these things have, you know, withstood centuries. Well, that's a great start. If this is a sign of things to come, I think we're in for a special trip. Now that the days are getting warmer, the sun's heating up all the sap out of these pinyon pines. And the smell is just so good. It's definitely one of my favorite scents out here. Wow. 
Well, we've got a little bit of a conundrum. <laughs> Clearly water is not going to be an issue this trip, but maybe too much water will be an issue. I would prefer to stay dry, so I think I'm going to see if there's any way I can walk around the rim here and drop in lower down. Okay, well that wasn't too bad, just a little extra work. We'll see what's up ahead. Starting to wonder if there's going to be more deep potholes that I can't avoid. Looks like a huge chunk of this cottonwood tree fell down probably this winter. I'm just blown away by how much water is in here. It's good. Southwest needs all the water it can get. It's insane. There's literally water everywhere. There's so much water that I'm actually going to just dump out a couple extra bottles I had. I started off with three liters, which is kind of my standard amount, but yeah, I mean, when the water is this plentiful, I'll just carry like one, one liter and just refill frequently. The water's heavy. Every liter is about 2.2 .2 pounds, so, you know, I just shed about four pounds here. All right, this is pretty cool. So I was just walking down here in the wash, and as I walked by, I spotted the corner of this box. And I was like, what the heck? And so I walked up here, and I realized, oh, this is an old cowboy camp. Old cans. Looks like an old pack saddle here, maybe. I think this is an old pack saddle. Huh. Wonder what vintage. Old horseshoes. Some pan of some kind. <laughs> I think it's seen better days. This is up on the overhang. Can't really make it out. I don't know if it's just uh, a name or a date. Sort of like it says, you know, maybe like June or January 12th, 1914, but I could be completely making that up. It's like a huge uh, kind of storage deal. Huh. Old bucket. What do we got? Huh. A very old... Vintage Lifesavers, <laughs> orange flavor. What book is this from? All My Friends Are Honest Folk. I'll have to look that up when I get back. <laughs> and Old Box of Matches, true American brand. Wonder what era that's from. It's like a little time machine back in here. Looks like that's it. That was a cool little find, wasn't it? Just a reminder, people have been crisscrossing through these canyons for, you know, centuries up until the modern day. As I continued on, I had an odd feeling that I had seen this site before. But how? When I got home, I did some searching and realized I had come across unnamed photos of that same cowboy camp. I looked at the photos with new eyes. One of them was from 2016 and showed the inside of that same metal bin. First, I was surprised at what I saw in the picture, then saddened to realize that a mere eight years ago, there were more than twice as many historic relics in the same container. Some selfish hiker or backpacker with sticky fingers had walked away with numerous relics of the cowboy's past, robbing not only me, but everyone who comes after of experiencing history firsthand. I truly fear what these places will look like in 10, 20, or 50 years if we can't learn how to tread lightly, respect others, and leave artifacts in place. But for the time being, I hiked on oblivious to this, still blissful because of my ignorance. 
I just dropped my pack and ran up to two different promising looking sites and nothing was there. That's kind of always the crux in places like this is, you know, there's so many possible areas of just some really neat historical and archeological finds that you're just, <laughs> you're torn between, you know, covering miles with the backpack and exploring every nook and cranny and you can't do it all. I mean, I'm definitely a recovering perfectionist. I always want everything to be, you know, just right. And sometimes that serves me well and other times I gotta come out in places like this and remember, hey, <laughs> it ain't gonna be perfect and just enjoy it. Find the little things to be grateful for. Huh. Speaking of which, literally as I said that, look down here next to my footprint. It's tiny, but that's just a little piece of corrugated pottery just washed down here bottom of the canyon from some ancient life probably somewhere up on these ledges where exactly hard to say nothing but coyotes ahead of me trying to knock some miles out then my eyes spy that up in the corner there wow <laughs> Didn't even make it up there yet. Uh, where are they? Went somewhere right around the corner. So just down here, looks like we've got, it's like the style I saw down in the creek. So there's like two entryways here. Pretty cool. Wow, look at this. I think it might be a pack rat's nest. And he just took, you know, whatever he could find around here. But there are literally I mean, dozens, if not like a hundred plus ancient corn cobs in there from the ancestral Pueblo. Just goes to show how much corn they were able to grow. In the past century when archaeologists and scholars have been trying to you know kind of classify people and and put different cultures into different time periods uh, one of the major distinguishing factors that they've used is the development of agriculture here in the southwest it's always hard for us in the modern day to to try to wrap our heads around how you farmed so extensively out here um, but you know, the ancient people eventually figured out how to grow corn, beans, and squash. And those were kind of some of their main staples for survival out here. So I just came up down from the bottom here, walked up this little wash, and already I can tell this place is impressive. There's pictographs and petroglyphs everywhere. Look at the size of these boulders. I mean, they're like the size of a small house. Some of them have various petroglyphs on them. Some animals, maybe a snake, turkey tracks. So this panel I know is pretty old. And the large reason I say that is this, what looks almost like a <laughs> the New Year's Eve ball in Times Square um, is actually a depiction of an atlatl, which was uh, like a predecessor of the bow and arrow. There's some pottery. This one in particular caught my eye. It's got a drill hole through it which 
kind of heard different theories about what people think that was used for. Here's the first structure tucked up under the cliff and these handprints. Then here's a look down the ledge where there's a lot more. This is a pretty big site. I mean, I'd say it's 40 to 50 feet long. One of the first things I notice are these portholes, which if you've watched other of my videos, you know, you've seen before. So I climbed up right here, but I wouldn't be surprised if at one point in time, all of this was like sealed off here where this wall starts. I think it's probably crumbled and then I'll walk you over. I suspect the main entry was right here. That's definitely a doorway. And this porthole is like an ancient ring doorbell system. Like this literally looks out and right there is the door that I just showed you. So if you're curious, that's what I just showed you. Here's the main doorway. And then this wall I'm sure has fallen, but it goes all the way back into there. And along this whole way, there's portholes everywhere. Oh wow, that is really cool. There's a ton of pottery back here. Wow, some big chunks too. Look at that, amazing. It's a really fascinating site for a lot of reasons. But look at this, it's like an old doorway that's been sealed up. So at one point in time, the original inhabitants obviously changed the use and function of that room in there. And for whatever reason, they sealed it up. So back here on this door, there's still a little bit of the original cordage that they used to tie that. Never ceases to amaze me. It's just so cool. Let's keep moving. We gotta find a campsite before it gets dark. So I came to another pour over, probably 40 feet off the ground. I'm confident there's a way around it, but I don't know whether I go to the right or left. So with daylight fading and having to do some troubleshooting, I'm tempted to go up on this ledge 
somewhere up in here. Just find a flat spot and set up camp. There's a little pool of water right back here that, that'll do too. So, whew, well, I think this is it. Got a little patch of sand here, mostly slick rock, but that's fine, it's flat. Um, yeah, I've had better, <laughs> I've had worse campsites. So I think I'm gonna drop the pack and go grab some water, get some dinner going, get tent set up, all that kind of stuff. Sometimes I see comments and people ask me what kind of gear I use. I've got some of it linked in the description, um, not all of it. So if you want to see more, just I guess let me know and I can add that. This is just a little one man tent from REI. It is nice not to be freezing as soon as the sun goes down. I think it's still supposed to get down to about 32 tonight, but you know, it's still probably in the mid 40s now, which feels pretty nice. Nothing special for dinner tonight. I had a feeling it'd be probably a late night to camp. So just freeze dried meal. I think I'm gonna sit here Eat that, watch the stars, and then head to bed so we can get an early start tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. I'm up at first light. I think we got a big day ahead, so I'm gonna get started with some camp chores like grabbing water and um, gonna make a big breakfast and we'll get rolling. If you're curious what's on the menu this morning, it's kind of like a breakfast scramble of sorts. The main things, you got these dehydrated eggs that actually taste really good. I can't really tell the difference. Um, some of that pre-cooked bacon, all you have to do is warm it up. And then I throw in a little bit of zucchini, pepper, and shallot. Not the whole thing, that'll be for dinner tonight. And then add some carbs. I just crumble up some uh, corn tortillas. Of course, you gotta top it with some cheese. Yeah, pretty good stuff. Eat good, you feel good. Top it with a salsa packet and some hot sauce. And that, my friends, is a good breakfast for a good day. All right, let's get rolling. I'm excited, although it's looking kind of foreboding in that direction we're headed. Uh, there's a big storm moving into the mountains later this afternoon, and I watched the weather really closely for this area, um, and they were only predicting like 20% chance of rain slash snow today, which I was kind of skeptical about because given the forecast I was seeing for the mountains, but I don't know. <laughs> we will see. It could get interesting before it gets over. Well, here's the 20%. If it gets worse, I'll have to stash this camera and break out the rain gear, but we'll see. I'm hoping it's just a kind of a passing shower. So I'm hiking along this water and, you know, seeing a lot of deer tracks, nothing uncommon with that. And I was walking right over here and check those out. <laughs> those aren't deer tracks. That's a mountain lion. Possibly tracking those deer. A little intriguing, isn't it? I mean, those aren't brand new, fresh or anything. That wasn't in the last day or probably a handful of days ago, I would guess. Beautiful day. Cleared up pretty quickly. Who knows, there may be more coming in. But for now, I'll take it. Feeling increasingly small, I continued on. 
firmly held within the confines of the canyon. Although the threat of storms still seemed possible, the weather held, and I was able to quickly put miles behind me. Eventually I came to a sandstone bench. I decided to drop some camping gear here, then continue on with a lighter pack, coming back to camp at this ledge by nightfall. Okay, let's go explore. I was just walking in the wash and I noticed I had this like huge kind of overhang and I thought, huh, I should go check up in there. And there is a really cool looking pictograph panel up there. Wow. I think the first thing that really stands out to me is just the colors. Like you've got green, red, orange, yellow. Oh, and I just realized white too. It's pretty uncommon to see, you know, all of these colors in the same panel. I believe that's representative of a corn plant. Bunch of handprints. Wonder what that guy's doing. Is he dancing? So I realized, okay, there's a huge bird here. Its eye, it's like a bullseye. So cool. There's so much. Some of it's more uh, clear than others. Look at that figure at the top. He's got like a sash around his waist. Look at that. That's kind of creepy. So while I had my backpack off, um, I kind of went around the corner and climbed up on a little bit of a ledge. While I was up there, I could look up Canyon and I saw a pretty interesting looking rune up there. So let's go check that out. Wow, there it is through the trees. This is far more impressive than I could tell from a distance. There's a lot of structures up there. So it sits about, I don't know, probably close to 40 feet off the canyon bottom. Man, this is unreal. So here's what you first come to. You know, probably, honestly, about a seven foot high wall with a really large doorway in terms of like what you normally see out here. And this thing is really solidly constructed. Like they didn't want this thing just knocked down easily. And then I was just sitting here marveling so this is built out like right to the very edge. And then there's a little cliff here. I mean, not like a death defined cliff, but you know, eight feet or something, you wouldn't want to fall off there. And it's pretty steep. I mean, I'm just sort of sitting up here on this. And yeah, it's like, I get that it can be done, but just to think about the work and the care that had to go into the construction of this and just some huge chunks of sandstone as well. Like, like this one right here. I mean, that's probably at least two feet long. You've got one over here, a little bit smaller, but still, I mean, hefty. And of course, more portholes here. Peepholes, loopholes, whatever you want to call them. And I just turned back to grab something out of my backpack. And I realized there's a bunch of handprints Look how small this one is in particular. You know, it's probably, it's not even the length of my index finger. That's, that's a young kid, like, I don't know, five years old. Look at these wooden support beams. Perfectly intact and preserved. Bunch of 
bunch of corn cobs just inside the doorway. You know, this wall is just so big and imposing, like a lot bigger than uh, really any other rune I can think I've come across. And it makes me wonder, you know, was this fully enclosed at one point? Or was its purpose to be really just like a kind of a defensive line, you know, something to keep, keep the unwanted people, whoever that might be, out? So right over the door, it's another little pictograph figure, maybe 15 feet down from him, all of this. There's just so much. Look at this handprint with like the swirl to it. That's different. I continued on down the ledge, past a small storage structure, to the main building that had first caught my attention. It's, it's unreal. I don't even know where to begin. And look at these wooden beams coming out. just noticed right outside the door there's this big sandstone slab um, it's what we call a matate and you can see there's like a faint indentation around it and that's where they would have ground corn and seeds and things like that so it's best not to enter buildings like this because Inadvertently, we bump the, the doors or the walls or something when we go in, but I'll put the camera in here for sure. So they had another doorway so you could exit and enter via both sides. Wow. You can see really how they built these things. It's like a two-story ruin here. Amazing. Okay, I'll put this action camera on the selfie stick through here. It seems like a fitting time to wax poetic and say some deep things about life or the ancients, but <laughs> I got nothing. taking it in, like hopefully you guys can do on the screen. For the afternoon, I'm gonna head up another side canyon and explore, and so I think this makes kind of a fitting breaking point where uh, I'll do the rest of the trip in a second part. I'll post it next week, and so if you are watching this video um, over a week since I posted it, I'll put a link in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for coming along.